Here we go. Hello, everybody. We're just behind the scenes. We're 20 seconds away from starting That's Our Praise Fellowship on our new time slot, 9 p.m. Mountain Time. And here we go. Welcome to Dots Arrow Praise Fellowship, right here on KUHSDenver.com, broadcasting worldwide from the Mile High City of Denver, Colorado. It's Sunday night, December 8th, 2019, and I'm your host, Stephen Ray Watts. I'm delighted to be with you last hour Sunday night, in all time zones around the world. Yeah around the entire world. Sit back or do what you normally do. Get ready for some uplifting, thought-provoking, and hopefully some inspiring conversation. As always, plenty of music. I'm going to play a couple of songs for the streaming audience tonight. And hopefully some spiritual growth over the next, well, we're going to say 40 minutes or so. That's Arrow Praise Fellowship right here on KUHSDenver.com. Well, we always like to start off with prayer. Prayer is so very important. Daily prayer. In my case, 24-7 prayer. Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, please look down on me and everyone who's joining us tonight with mercy and grace. Help us to open up our hearts and minds to your word, your will, and your way, and be in your moment, which is your time. You meet us in the present, Lord. This is something that we know. So help us be present with you to open our hearts and minds to your word, your will, and your way, your living word, Lord. And help us to feel your presence. And help us to be united as one as the body of Christ. For it is in his holy name, your living, risen son, Jesus Christ, that we play. pray. Amen. Well, tonight... On Dot Zero Praise Fellowship, we're going to kind of recap our recovery tour 2019. Yep, recovery tour 2019. That's right. Here's where all we went Kansas, Oklahoma, and Texas, and we had a great time. When I say we, I'm talking about the Lord and myself. Welcome to Dot Zero Praise Fellowship on a Sunday night. Here's the here's my newest my newest one that I've been showing that I like so much. And when we do that, we got to do what my little grandson used to do. Every time we used to say, praise Jesus. I love that. I love that. Welcome, everybody. We're going to talk about the whole trip. We're going to talk about scripture tonight. Ezekiel 3, 10 through 
10 and 11. That's NLT. And we're going to talk about another scripture, Isaiah 6, 8. This is a service coin I was given by Celebrate Recovery in Forney, Texas. And I'm going to read the scripture that goes with that, and we're going to talk about that a little bit. Excited about this new time schedule for us, 9 o'clock Mountain Time, a little bit earlier on in the evening, and I think it's going to be kind of nice for everybody involved, and uh, it's going to be interesting to see how the abbreviated shows work out as well, both on the live stream here on KUHSDenver.com, but also on YouTube. So let's talk about that. Please go to YouTube and type in Dotsero Praise Fellowship, and you can find all the shows on there. Also, go to DotsEroPraiseFellowship.com, and you can find our brand new CD. I took a bunch of these CDs on the road, on the recovery tour, and we had a lot of people take these home. And hopefully the ministry through the music will be something that will bless people, that will give them inspiration. And I trust in my heart and soul that the Holy Spirit will take this music and take this little package of this CD that I got to be a part of and help it to minister to those out there in need of that inspiration. Coming right back on Dots Arrow Praise Fellowship. Welcome. So happy to have you with me tonight. I want to make sure that we're not going to double that. I think we're okay for now. Good. Well, I'm psyched about that. Nine o'clock. We're starting from tonight forward. I'm going to give it a try to see how it works. I'm really excited about the earlier time slot. We are still experimenting and trying to, well, trying to get our abbreviated show in a format that works and is getting more comfortable and becomes, you know, second nature rather than uh, me trying too hard with it. It's a little difficult. I remember, it kind of brings back memories of when we started Conscious Conversations a few years back. And I would come in and I had a lot of ideas of what, how I wanted the show to flow. And it's been a journey ever since. Speaking of journeys, we are, we just got back from recovery tour uh, 2019. We went to Kansas, Oklahoma, and Texas. We're going to recap that and talk a little bit about an amazing journey. I've got to be honest with you, I had high expectations for this particular journey, but I had no idea how amazing this trip was going to be. And I just want to thank the Lord with all my heart for protecting me and keeping me in His guidance and protection the whole way. I was among um, many believers and among many people who had testimonies that I just that are rather overwhelming testimonies of, of, of that, that glorify the Lord and also 
testimonies that are heartrending and testimonies that I heard stories of people that have had life-changing experiences and how God and Jesus has brought them peace even in the midst of those challenges. I'm going to share some of those as we go along tonight. Scripture tonight. We talked about Scripture. Well, this is a Scripture that was with me all the way. Ezekiel 3, 10, and 11. And I've memorized it, and I think I've got to make sure that I point out that this is NLT in the translation. And Let's see if I've got it memorized, okay? Hold on, I just want to make sure I've got it. Son of man, let all of my words sink deep within your heart. Within your own heart first. Listen carefully to them for yourself. See how good I did. See how well I did. Son of man, let all my words sink deep within your own heart first. Listen carefully to them for yourself. Okay, well, let's see. Son of man, let all my words sink deep into your own heart first. Listen to them carefully for yourself. Ah, I did it. What does that mean? What does it mean for, for me? Well, it means that daily Bible reading is, again, one of those things that I have to practice. We talked about the entire road trip, four elements that I read from Joni Yoder's book, The God-Dependent Life, which are daily Bible reading, daily prayer, trust, obedience, and I added a couple of my own. First of all, the first one is, first one is time for, to be quiet, time to be still before the Lord. And then as always, as we, we try to, in everything, give thanks. Thanksgiving, well, it was a trip about Thanksgiving since it happened over Thanksgiving. And in that, it was very important that we brought those two elements together. So to, to re recap again, things for us daily, daily prayer. I say pray all the time, 24 seven, all kinds of different prayers. Daily Bible reading, I think, reading the living word of God, meditating on it, and letting those words sink deep within your own heart first. Listening to them carefully for yourself to see how they apply to you as scripture of Ezekiel 3, 10, and 11 NLT apply. Because the living word of God, the Bible, is speaking to you personally. That is my opinion. It does me, and I know it will for you too. That's why it's the living word, because it has the ability to reach out, to jump off those pages and speak to you directly in your circumstances, in your present, in your future, and all the things that concern you and your loved ones. Trust. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. Acknowledge Him in all that you do and He will make your paths straight. Some, sometimes the translation says, Seek His will in all that you do and He will make your paths straight. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord. I add another thing to that. Surrender. And that's one of the things that I don't do. 
on a regular basis. But I should do each and every morning and check myself throughout the day to make sure that I'm surrendering. I need to turn my will and my life over to my Lord and Savior Jesus, not only once a day, but to check myself, keep myself accountable to where that I have continued to leave my life and will in his hands. Your will, Lord God. Your will be done, not mine. So that I can stay out of self. Obedience. To obey. To listen to that word. Trust. And then follow through on what it is saying to you. You will know intuitively when you spend that time invested in prayer and meditation, trust, you will know. And then obedience is what will gain knowledge, wisdom, and favor with the Lord. All these things, being still and being thankful as well. Well, we started our trip off a day early. And it was an amazing day as all the people here in Denver, Colorado know, because it was snowing, it started raining on the 22nd, on the 21st of November, and it started raining, uh, turning to snow. And I talked to my wife, Sandra, and we were getting things ready to go. I was going to leave on Friday the 22nd. And we looked at each other and we thought, you know what, if it's gonna snow, maybe it would be a good idea to hightail out of town on Thursday and try to beat the storm that was getting ready to hit Denver. And you know, it was great advice from Sandra. Thank you for that. Honey, I really appreciate that because it really was, for the first time, I, 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 we, we looked at each other, I, I listened and I said, wow, let's, I think that's a great idea. And I had the opportunity of doing it. So I left late the afternoon and drove through Colorado into Kansas and ended up in this little town called Larned. And Larned's a beautiful town, stayed there for the night, had the next day, the 22nd, to mentally prepare for the trip. And I'm glad I had that because it was very, very important. While that was happening, everybody in Denver was getting hammered by about a foot and a half of snow. Some people had two feet or more of snow and it worked out great that I was uh, on the trip and ready to roll. So I took that day, the 22nd, 11 22nd, to mentally prepare to pray, to catch up on Bible verses and on themes of recovery that I wanted to talk about and to just go through plans. Well, the next day, we started off the trip at Everything Under the Sun. Everything Under the Sun is a Christian gift store and Christian bookstore in Great Bend, Kansas, and got to play about an hour show there and talk with some people that were in doing some holiday Christmas shopping and it was a it was a wonderful experience that day was a very full day we got a chance to to spend doing that little concert and then driving from there and I want to thank everybody at every uh, I want to thank Mary specifically and uh, the owner Krista for inviting me to play at that little bookstore. I met some people there that day and we had CDs there at the store. So these were there so that people could pick them up and the donation could go to that great ministry of everything under the sun. When I say everything under the sun, it's important to point out that it's S-O-N, referring to the one and only Holy Son of God, Jesus. Everything Under the Sun, Christian bookstore and gift shop in Great Bend. From there, I drove to Mount Rouge, Kansas, one of my favorite places, 
and was able to speak and perform for Moundridge or Valley Hope of Moundridge and it was a great night. I had the opportunity to play and I and I was trying to figure out if I if I did a, a good balance of playing and speaking. Well, it turns out that what I spoke about was the topic at the AA meeting that was there after the, after my uh, presentation. It was great because I love to do that. On a Saturday night, I can go and meet with the clientele, the people that are uh, at Moundridge Valley Hope. We had a mini concert and a, and a message, and then I packed up, and they have some, uh, one of the AA groups out of Wichita comes in and brings an AA group on every Saturday night that I was able to attend from there. And so it was an amazing, amazing night. It was great to get a chance to do an AA meeting with some of the clientele of uh, Valley Hope of Moundridge. And I want to thank my dear friend, uh, Michael Grover, who was so uh, instrumental and so helpful in getting names and numbers for me to follow up on, on being able to visit three, three Valley Hopes on this trip, Valley Hope Recovery Centers, and also, and then I got to visit three Celebrate Recoveries and two churches. That's a lot. That's a lot on this trip. So that was Saturday, and I drove back and spent the night in Hutchinson. Hutchinson, Kansas, and the very next day, got up and got to spend Sunday service at New Resurrection Church in Hutchinson, Kansas, with Pastor Charles Crumble. Charles Crumble is a pastor that actually was wandering down the 16th Street Mall with a friend one night and heard the music up at Live at Jack's. And they decided to, well, they liked what they heard. So they decided to come up the stairs and listen. They came in and to his delight, as he describes it, he was able to hear me describe how his sanctuary came about. The story about my son and I being in the sanctuary of Maxville Christian Church the night before Thanksgiving 2013 and having that song literally, quite literally, come out of nowhere. Well, it's obviously a song that was given to us to be able to present to the world by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and our Heavenly Father with the Holy Spirit. And he was moved by that. And he, he invited me to be a guest at New Resurrection Church at one point. So I got to go and be a guest at New Resurrection Church in 2017. Well, that led to us being able to reconnect this last Sunday, the 24th, 11-24-19. And I, I had an experience there that was just unbelievable. A morning of worship, a morning into an afternoon of worship that is something I have never experienced the like. It was a small congregation that, mor that morning because there was many other events that were going on with the church the week prior and the week after. But the worship was so spirited and the praise was so sincere and from the heart and everybody in the church welcomed me like I was family. There was time not only for a sermon and a message, there was time for each person in the congregation who wanted to testify or talk about issues and prayer requests on their heart to be able to bring those to the congregation. We laughed, we cried, we talked about needs, we talked about hurts, we talked about triumphs and 
God's amazing grace. And it was a long service, but it was one of the most inspiring church worship experiences I've ever I've ever attended in my entire 57 years of life. So I say hallelujah, praise the Lord. And if you're ever in Hutchinson on a Sunday, Hutchinson, Kansas, stop in and see Pastor Crumble and his wife Stacy and the entire family, the entire body of Christ at New Resurrection Church in Hutchinson, Kansas. Well, I want to put I've got to get some songs ready. So we're going to play a couple of songs tonight. And I'm going to get it going right now. Probably should play we should probably play some holiday music tonight, some Christmas music tonight. That's another story where a lady I talked with at the end of the concert, at the end of the concert, at, uh, everything under the sun told me it offends her when people don't say Merry Christmas as opposed to Happy Holidays. We talked about that and realized that, no, maybe it shouldn't offend, but maybe it should start with those of us that believe in Jesus and believe that Christmas is about his birth that we simply don't back away from saying and looking people right in the eye saying Merry Christmas Happy New Year but Merry Christmas we're gonna hear a song by Christine Marie and uh, we'll see what happens after that we are on this tour and we've gotten through the first three days we're gonna get into driving to Texas Wiley Texas celebrate recoveries coming up and if you don't hear those you'll be listening to music and we'll be back with you after that celebrate recoveries in both Texas and Kansas churches another church well three churches the celebrate recovery in Terrell Texas was at First Baptist Church as well as First Baptist Church in Chinook, Kansas. Kind of a coincidence. Cool, if you will. This is Gratitude by Christine Marie. And we are, we are, we're uh, clear from radio for just a minute. So we're gonna listen to Christine Marie's song and then we're gonna Let's see, we're gonna, I've gotta look at my time here. I think we're doing fine. We're probably gonna have one more song and then. And then we'll, we'll probably uh, finish up. So what we did there was we moved from there to drove to Wiley, Texas and then on I arrived there on Sunday night and got to meet with Pastor Jesse we went to the Waffle House and it was awesome we had a, a wonderful meal the next day we had lunch together uh, with uh, his wife Kasha and my grandson Justice and then I went to Forney, Texas and this is, brings me to our the next thing I wanted to get to, and it's very important that we get to this. It's the next scripture. I got this this recovery this this recovery coin. It's a service coin medallion, and on the front of it, it says "Celebrate Recovery." And I love the Celebrate Recovery program that the church has put on. It's based on twelve steps. And it's also talks about addictions, but hurts and hangups and people that have all kinds of things that Jesus dealt with on a daily basis. It's for us to be together and help each other as Jesus taught us to do. On the, on the front of it, it says, my grace is sufficient 
for you. And it also says, on the back of it, it says, service. Then I heard the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? And I said, Here I am, Lord. Send me. That's Isaiah 6, 8. Isaiah 6, 8. Let's read that. We're going to read, first of all, from the, NI, uh, the NIV version of uh, Isaiah 6, 8. I love this because it's a call to, to, it's a calling to service. It's a calling to be the one that goes with the Lord's calling. So Isaiah 6, 8. Then I heard a voice. The voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? And I said, oh, Let me turn this down just a little bit. And I said, Here I am, Lord. Send me. He said, Go and tell this people, Be ever hearing, but not understanding. Be ever seeing, but but not perceiving. Make the heart of this people calloused. Make their ears dull and close their eyes. Otherwise they might see with their eyes, hear with their ears, understand with their hearts, and turn and be healed. I love that. I love that. But the gist and the biggest and most important part of this is. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And whom will go for us? And I said, Here I am, Lord. Send me. And that's what happened. And it was an amazing trip. An amazing trip. Thank you, Forney. Celebrate Recovery for giving me this service medallion. This means so very much to me, especially the scripture that's on it. And there are two. My grace is sufficient. My grace is enough for you. And I cherish those, and it's the second one I've gotten. Well, let's see what it says in, in uh, the NLT about this as well. I'll get there. It says... Then I heard the Lord asking, Whom should I send as a messenger to this people? Who will go for us? And I said, Here I am, send me. And he said, Yes, go and say to this people, Listen carefully, but do not understand. Watch closely, but learn nothing. Harden the hearts of these people. Plug their ears and shut their eyes. The way they will not the way they will not see with their eyes. I'm sorry, that way they will not see with their eyes, nor hear with their ears, nor understand with their hearts, and turn to me for healing. That's what they need. That's what we need, is to turn to the Lord for healing, to listen, to listen to his messengers. One of the things that the commentary says here that I really like is it, it says, Isaiah's recognition of his own uncleanness did not disqualify him from a relationship with God and a life of service to him. Bingo. In contrast, it set the stage for his cleansing and commission into service. Here I am, Lord, send me. When we hide our sins and failures, we negate the possibility of real recovery. When we admit them, confess them, and repent from them, God can cleanse, restore, and use us 
in his service. God is not looking for people who are perfect or who pretend to be perfect. He is looking for people who can say with Isaiah, Here I am, Lord. Send me. If we are willing to turn our past failures over to God, he will not allow them to stand in the way of his plans for us and our future. Being, fu being fruitful does not necessarily mean we have to be a great success in human terms. We need to not feel compelled to achieve or look good to others. Isaiah certainly did not. His goal was to fill God's will. Our aim, like Isaiah's, should be to be faithful to God's calling, not measure up to the world's standards. And I say to that, Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Forney, for that. That was an amazing That was an amazing coin. So I went to, and I got, I got, thanks to Lisa at Forney Celebrate Recovery, I got to visit another Celebrate Recovery the next night on Tuesday night, would be uh, November 26th in Terrell, Texas. And I received, it was received absolutely as family, as I mean, as the body of Christ, as somebody they have known forever. And they gave me this beautiful cross. This product is made of genuine olive wood in Bethlehem, Holy Land. Israel, made by Christian craftsmen and women working in small and home-based factories. The purchase of this article helps ma maintain Christian witness in the Holy Land through supporting our brothers and sisters in Christ. And they gave me this among other gifts to remember our visit and an invitation to come back and be with the, the unbelievable family and fellowship in Terrell, Texas of Celebrate Recovery. Thanks, Kay, for inviting me and thank you, Lisa, for that as well. Well, we're going to be back on radio for a minute, and it's about time for us to wrap up the trip and talk about upcoming things. Don't forget, it was Thanksgiving after that, and on Friday, we head to Oklahoma. And we're back on God Cyril Praise Fellowship our abbreviated version. We're getting ready to wrap things up tonight, but we need to make sure that we thank everybody on this unbelievable recovery tour that we went on. Well, from there, we went to Oklahoma to Valley Hope of Cushing, and I met some incredible people there, musicians, quite a large audience of people young and older as well, all finding recovery from addiction. The next day it was off to Chinook, Kansas, and to be in the fellowship of Firehouse, Firehouse, I mean, Fire Escape Coffee House and Concert Hall, and my friends, my friend, my dear friends, Mark and Marilyn Harms, who are the proprietors, uh, the, the people in trust working for that ministry, that youth ministry there. It is run by Youth of Chanute, Kansas, and it's an amazing place. Also the home of KFEX radio, uh, radio which is the radio station that is uh, a huge FM station that is right there at the Fire Escape Coffee House. Go to fireescape.net, fireescape.net, and you can find out more about that ministry, that youth ministry that serves young people. You can also find 
you'll find the concert, the entire concert that we did on Sunday night, December 1st, on Dot Zero Praise Fellowship YouTube. So check that out. Go to YouTube, Dot Zero Praise Fellowship, and you will see that entire concert. I want to thank Mark and Marilyn Harms from the bottom of my heart, my brother and sister in Christ, for letting me come and be a part of that concert, be a part of that two days that we were able to be there. We were on the radio with David Rem Rembolt, the uh, program director for KFEX Radio, and I want to make sure I'm getting that all, all right, because I might, I hope I'm not um, mistaking the, the call letters of that. But you'll find that when you go to uh, the website, that is fireescape.net. You'll find out more about that. We spent some time on the radio on Monday. On Sunday, we were at First Baptist Church, and I got to play with the praise and worship team there. Thank you, Lance, for inviting me and letting me be a part of that worship service. Another unbelievably inspiring worship service that I got to play with the praise team, and that was a, that was a, a, a dream come true as well. Also, got to visit Celebrate Recovery right there at First Baptist Church in Chinook, Kansas. Well, from there, we traveled all the way back to Norton, Kansas for Norton for Valley Hope of Norton, Kansas, and an amazing welcome by a smaller group of recovery, but a very powerful experience of one-on-one -on -one talk about God's ability to take away the, the addictions that are holding us back and keeping our life from moving forward in his calling. I want to thank Chaplain Kirk Casson and also Faith Wanji for inviting me to be a part of that wonderful, wonderful experience at Valley Hope of Norton, Kansas. From there, we ended up our tour back in Everything Under the Sun. Everything Under the Sun Christian Bookstore, and I met some incredible ladies. A Bible study group, if you will, that reminded me so much of my mom and her Bible study group. They listened to my concert and testimony, and I listened to their testimonies after we finished that concert. And I heard faith, hope, and absolute trust and obedience in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ with all of their families and with all of the different life experiences they had. An amazing, an amazing testament to Jesus and the lives he's changing. I heard testimonies from people who had lost friends to addiction, alcoholism, 26 year old who just lost his life because of this and his friend who couldn't put together a reason why but was bringing that to the Lord for the answers. A person who had been incarcerated for 28 years said he ran into a brick wall. He ran into a wall who, by the name of Jesus Christ who brought him to the point of finding his way out of prison and is now doing ministry at a church in Texas as well. So many unbelievable stories that I could share all night long and will be sharing over the next weeks here on Dotsero Praise Fellowship. An amazing tour, an amazing journey. The Lord said, who can I send? And I said, here I am, Lord. Send me.
Well, it's been a great night on That's Our Real Price Fellowship, but we do have to bring it to an end. And I just want to say thank you to everybody who opened up their hearts, their homes, and their establishments to let me be a part, their groups, their recovery centers, their churches, their recovery groups, to let me be a part of trying to give testimony and help others in God's service. It was an amazing trip and I thank you all from the bottom of my heart. Let us make sure that we are praying for everybody that is struggling in recovery. There are so many and we need to make sure that we include them all. Those who are struggling with diagnoses of physical ailments and mental ailments that are keeping them from the happiness they so much deserve. Bring it all to the Lord in prayer. That is the way we can make a difference. A shout out to my soulmate, Sandra. I love you, Sandra. Thanks for everything and thanks for your help and for being my voice from home as I was back out on the road. Our benediction is from Hebrews 13, 20 and 21. Now may the God of peace who brought up from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep and ratified an eternal covenant with his blood, may he equip you with all you need for doing his will. May he produce in you through the power of Jesus Christ, every good thing that is pleasing to him. All glory to him forever and ever. As I was spending quiet time today, what came to me was this. Nothing matters. Nothing else matters except for the knowledge and the comfort in the thought and the fact that Jesus Christ is coming back to redeem his people. Praise the Lord. Amen. And at this time of year, and in the words of Charles Dickens from his famous story that is in many ways my own story, a story of redemption and reclamation, God bless us, everyone. Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas. For Dotsero Praise Fellowship, I'm Stephen Ray Watts. Good night.